Hey, Roy, welcome to the earliest alert, which uh, again, we're counting down to Kentucky's darkest day. Uh, several things to point out. Uh, let's start off with the Eclipse notes for today. Uh, another uh, kind of a fun one here for uh, today, talking about, for those of you that have seen the movie, a uh, little shop of horrors. We're talking about the man eating plant, the Venus flytrap, Audrey 2, uh, is actually discovered during a total solar eclipse. I'm sure you remember the line of feed me so see what well, feed me. At least uh, hope you do. If not, I just look like an idiot. Anyway, don't forget we're still going to be at the fair on the 19th. Uh, giving away those glasses. We've got a lot planned for you guys. A lot planned uh, for the eclipse day itself. Um, the amount of staff that we have and, and uh, coverage we'll be bringing you guys is going to be really impressive. So stay tuned for updates very soon on that but we hope to see you all at the state fair for those glasses on the 19th all right weather today uh very similar to yesterday except we have a bit more dry air so i think there'll be like a hole or a little pocket where we're going to have more than likely um uh a less in the way of these fair weather cumulus clouds compared to yesterday they should be a little more prevalent they're already popping up in southwest indiana a little more prevalent kind of an arc to the south and southwest of us it looks like still uh, really nice of the day Water view shows how we're uh, in good shape here in the Ohio Valley, nice and quiet. Uh, humidity is still fairly low. It's not zero. That's why these cumulus clouds can develop because there's enough moisture still in the air and it's chilly aloft and you get the combination. It's just how things work in the atmosphere. It's an imbalance. So you, something has, has to react and that's going to be the cumulus clouds. Now to the south, we got Franklin, a tropical storm getting off and close to hurricane status. In fact, look real close. Isn't that impressive? This Gulf 16 satellite, you can see the bubbling up of the convection right in the center. I mean, this thing's really, for the last few moments of its life here, it's really uh, going to give a run for the money, it looks like. It's really beginning to power up. So very impressive with that satellite technology. All right, let's talk about our short-term weather. I'll take you all the way through uh, early Friday. rest of the day t today, we're fine. Tonight, they're going to get a gentle uh, flow from the south in our eastern areas. You see little specks of showers begin to pop, uh, mainly east of 65. And then the same thing around the Lake Cumberland Corridor for tomorrow same ordeal. I think our very far southern counties and far eastern are the ones that could see a few thunderstorms. That's why at the moment the rain chance is only 20%. The rest of us upper 80s. I mean, we'll get close to 90 if we get uh, enough sunshine. I wouldn't rule it out. And then we quiet down and then we deal with what's going to be an approaching system here on Friday into Friday night. Uh, the question is how much that's going to blow up. The models are really varying here. Sometimes they blow the big complex thunderstorms in here Friday night. That would then allow for a fairly quiet Saturday other uh, models are coming in not so active on Friday, therefore blow things up on Saturday. So it's going to be back and forth here on this whole setup. Just know that we got several, a uh, couple areas of low pressure actually moving through, and we got this front that's going to be uh, passing through, stalling out, and then coming back through again. And it's just kind of a wiggle pattern all the way through Sunday to Monday that's going to keep the rain chance in the forecast, unfortunately. Uh, rain chances, we're going to have to trend carefully. We're trying to trend really low for right now, uh, and then until we get a, a really good idea on the pattern and the timing of how this will evolve, then we can raise those chances up in the time periods of the day that we think are going to be most impacting. So stay close to the forecast. Now, looking way ahead, let's get right into the, the uh, darkest day, the 21st of August. Once again, you're looking at the uh, ensembles from our friends over at Weather Bell. This is great stuff. It takes all the different model ideas and gives you like a generalized idea of what could happen on that day. What you're looking at here is uh, the GFS ensembles for pressure. And if you remember this from yesterday, uh, it's the potential for there to be low pressure. And low pressure it induces cloud cover and rainfall and cooler weather. And uh, we see the pressures are still being found to our west and north, and it's still betting on the idea that we would have high pressure across the southeast corner of the country. When you look at the potential rainfall from the GFS, it is giving uh, at least western Kentucky about a 50-50 shot at rain, and here in Louisville about a 30 to 40 percent chance of rain. Why is that? If it's high pressure, well, it's because the high is parked over here. And while all the areas of low pressure and the jet stream flow around the high, it's still a south flow off the Gulf of Mexico, aiming right into this area, which means it's going to be humid, and these are going to be the, the typical thunderstorms of pop in the heat of the day. Now, it's not all bad news. All right, that was kind of expected for this eclipse anyway in August. We were already anticipating that scenario, which is most common. Uh, now, it can lead to cumulus clouds developing in the 1 to 3 o'clock hour on a typical day like this. And then you get your thunderstorms usually after three o'clock into the evening. For the crucial time, it's going to be the uh, the two to three o'clock hour Eastern time or one to two central. That's going to be crucial to 
avoid rain and hopefully keep the clouds spaced out enough it's not going to be disruptive. So GFS idea is not the greatest, but it's not exactly a bummer either. Now looking at the Euro, here are the uh, pressures once again, betting on the idea that uh, there will be high pressure here, low pressure is a little oddly to the north there with this uh, particular run. Uh, when it comes to its pot potential for rain, uh, it's a, the opposite. It's got a lower chance in western Kentucky of about 10 to 20 percent and about 40 percent into northern Kentucky. And the reason for that is it just has the pressure systems balanced out a little differently, more than likely the highest placed a little more in this area. Uh, or even over into here. So there's still some question on the euro where it wants to put the high uh, to allow from that. You can kind of see hints of where that south flow is going to be off the Gulf and the eastern seaboard there. Uh, but it too is not a bad uh, solution right now that's showing up. And the Canadian, I don't have an ensemble for the rainfall, but for the pressure, you could, it's, it's keeping the same theme as the others. So confidence is fairly high that we're going to have high pressure close to us. We just have to figure out where that high is going to be. We want it to be as close to us as possible. If it's too far away from us, we're going to be on what they call the arena fire. We're going to be on the edge. We're going to have to deal with pop-up showers and thunderstorms, and there could be a couple of fronts that could work their way in. And there are signs of uh, front before and after that day that could impact our weather um, for the 21st. So there's, uh, again, the players on the field are still there. We just are having a, the models, of course, this far out are still having a tough time on how the game is going to be played out. So... That's all I have for today, guys. So it's not all gloom and doom, uh, but I'm still hoping for a better view of this in, in the coming days. So stay with us.